Personal Log Supplemental. I wasn't getting cashiered. I was getting a second chance. A chance to prove myself, or to screw up again. I see he was right about the office, but it'll work. As soon as I get a new chair, God, this thing is from Torquemada's torture chamber. I hate this owl. My berth on the Trident is acceptable, the bed is comfortable, and the room has all I need while on missions. The office has everything necessary for me to do my duties. At least I have a chair that won't torture my back. Of course, this mound of paperwork makes up for that. And so it begins. Enter. Sir. At ease, Commander. Please be seated. Uh, I don't think so, sir. Is there a purpose to this visit, Commander? Oh yeah, I just want to take a good look at the person who took my position. Explain yourself, Commander. I have been acting first officer on this ship for the past two months. All of a sudden I'm told I'm second officer, not first officer. Did you ever receive orders that you would be executive officer? Well, no, but then I you just- you were not the executive officer, merely acting executive officer. Dismissed. I'll be watching you, Commander. You can count on that. Commander Norma Lorian. Recently promoted. No wonder she thought the position was hers. Family history steeped in Starfleet command? A lot to live up to. Probably hoping to have that first officer position, then move on to the center seat at an early age. Sorry to disrupt your career plans, Commander. Better get used to it. They come often enough in life, and more so in command. Took you long enough, Commander. I was beginning to think you were ignoring me. Get on up here and let's clear you for duty. And let me be the first to officially welcome you aboard. You might be the only one welcoming me, Christine. I'm here on sufferance. And I've already ruffled one person's feathers just by boarding. It doesn't take much to ruffle Norma's feathers, Janice. I know the Commodore only told her she was interim first officer. Considering her family history, she was probably hoping the Commodore would give her the position after seeing her work. Disappointing break for her. Life's full of disappointments. She needs to learn that before she has a really bad setback. Life is just as full of disappointments as it is accomplishments. This was one pretty hard break, Chris. I suppose so. But it's not like all wine gave her the position and then took it away from her. And even though she's out there spreading some pretty poisonous rumors about you, there are those who are trying very diligently to neutralize the damage. Okay, you're cleared for duty. Get on out of here. I have some new toys to play with. You have the con, Commander. No changes to ship status. I have the con. I could tell Commander Lorian had been talking to the crew members, and I could see some had taken her side while others were taking a wait-and-see approach.
Christine Chapel had said that I had people who at least were willing to give me the benefit of the doubt. I had a feeling that Lorian didn't know about them or felt they couldn't really help me. She had a lot to learn, and I guess I was the one designated to do the teaching. Damn. Status report, Ensign Trensis. Commander? Any changes since the last status report given to Commander Lorian? Yes, sir. We've increased our orbital velocity to compensate for an incoming supply convoy. Very well. Carry on. Commodore on the bridge. You have the con, sir. We've increased our orbital velocity to compensate for an incoming supply convoy. Thank you, Commander. I have the con. Hold. What? Enough already. Well, I, I don't even give ever care. I said enough. Look, I get it. I'm an interloper. An intruder. A usurper. You weren't expecting me. Well, lady, this wasn't something I was expecting either. I was expecting to be cashiered out of Starfleet. Do yourself and your career a favor, Commander. Don't try to get into that center seat so damn fast. Take time to learn about command from the Commodore and from all the other senior officers around you. Oh, including you? Especially from me. Learn from my screw-ups. Don't repeat them. Look, you have the skills, the abilities to go far. Maybe not as fast as you'd like to go, but I see you one day in the center seat. You do? Yes, I do. I've served with one of the best, and I'm getting to serve with another great one. Oh. You can't compare Captain Kirk to Commodore Allwine. <laughs> I can. I was Kirk's yeoman, after all. He was human. He put his pants on, one leg at a time. Yeah, I know. But he was a... He loved. He hated. He had great days. He had good days. And he had bad days. He made mistakes. Sometimes big ones. And he learned from them. That's what made him who he was. One day you'll discover the same is true for the Commodore, for any leader. Resume. As I said, you have the skill, the ability to go far. Pull another stupid stunt like you just did on the bridge by omitting the orbital velocity and you'll end your career. That report you gave me was deliberately incomplete. Fortunately, it was inconsequential. It could have gone wrong. Trust me, you wouldn't want to have to explain a delay for a stupid reason. And trying to trip me up is stupid. The Commodore does not tolerate fools. Well, are you going to tell him? I see no reason to tell him about the incident as long as it's the last such incident. All right, well, I'm going to still keep my eye on you, Commander. I damn well expect it of you, Commander, so please do. Consider that a direct order, in fact. Try the board. It's pretty good. I hated it when Chekhov suggested it. I still hate it. You go ahead. I have more time for lunch than you. Have you ever tried Armenian food? No, never have. Permit me to introduce you to a couple of dishes. Two servings veal, with pomegranate sauce and gravas baklava. Thank you. Thanks for the suggestion. It was delicious. And for the help on the bridge. But Morse code? It was the quickest thing that I could think of that they wouldn't know. I'm glad you remember. Nearly didn't. I was too busy studying Commander Lorian. But I think Ensign Tanumak noticed it. I wouldn't be surprised. He's on top of everything. I was surprised to see you on board. You should have seen my reaction. I even called the Commodore nuts. I know I screwed up on the Excelsior. Yes, you did. I just want to help Sulu, my friend. I forgot I had a job helping the rest of you. 
I should have notified Starfleet Command. If you can admit to that, then there is hope for you. But I also screwed up. I was second officer. I should have involved medical and command when I saw you weren't. I could have made it seem you were keeping an eye on Sulu and had me taking care of the crew. It was my duty as second officer to step in when you couldn't or wouldn't. I was so disappointed in you that you didn't ask me for help. So I asked for a transfer and specifically that I not be placed in the chain of command. I never really wanted a command berth. Just let me be a helmsman. I preferred to pilot the ship. I am a good helmsman, Commander. And you were a good second officer. You just suffered from the same lack of guidance from Captain Sulu as me. The difference was, I had command school training and didn't use it. You didn't have that training. And for the record, you're not a good helmsman. You're a great helmsman. I'm pleased you're here as our senior helmsman. should have every cardiac arrhythmia known to sentient life with all the coffee you consume, Duffy. Nonsense, I'm merely replenishing the fluids in my vascular system. I'll have to add fluid overload to my list of things to watch for. Enough of the medical scan, especially before breakfast. Oh, you know you'd be worried. So Doc gave me a clean bill of health, and you know you never drink this without my civil approval. So give it here and quit hogging. Hey, I just don't want to hear some fear of that sludgy ruin engineering. Well, if you can't bear to hear the truth, bring it. Okay, that'll do, I think. Please share the coffee with the rest of us, Mr. Duffy. Since she was says. Is he always that protective of the coffee pot? No. <laughs> Will you just wait till someone remembers to bring the breakfast pastries? Pastries? Mm -hmm. Command prerogative. Bear claws and maple bars are mine. Now to get started, I'd like to discuss the report. Commander, at ease. We have a mission. Well, now we have two. Our first mission was to study the Zeta Orchid Disease System, specifically Zeta 4. But this arrived and it takes precedence. They want us to start looking for Captain Walker. From the Tristan? The same. He's been missing for over a year now, presumed dead, and Top Brass is getting worried. They believe he's somewhere in the system or somewhere on the planet. Do we have anything to go on? Not much. But I have faith in you and this crew to find him. Interesting way to run a staff meeting, Commander. I wanted our first meeting to be amicable, sir. Nicely done. I like the way you managed to neutralize a negative tone in Commander Lorian. Sir? I like the way you kept the confrontation private. But next time, in the future, I would much rather it not be in the turbo lift. And don't put the car on hold. It slows down ship traffic, which keeps me from my morning coffee. Oh, Commander, I do hope you did like that, Alex. <laughs>